People on my Discord have been pestering me for ages to get a Corsair, and I finally got one. Let's have a look. The box looks fantastic. As you can see, you have this fantastic box art. I share this on the Discord server, and everyone mentioned the fantastic box art. As you can see, it is one 72nd kit. It is a F4U Corsair, and it is made by Heller. This kit does come in two vehicle schemes, the Marine and the Navy one, both very nice. The box then repeats itself the entire way around with the decal scheme and your general box information. Nothing too fancy, but still pretty neat box. The underside is also uh, pretty rubbish, it's just a white piece of cardboard. The box itself then is fairly compact. Inside we have these very nice instructions, more on them later. We have the decal sheet, also to be shared in a bit, and of course the plastic sprues. So that's all good. As you can see then, these are the instructions. They are the original ones from 1979. You can see the acid standing here, but that is to expect of its age. It's fairly compact with some decent information on the aircraft there, and of course your main instructions in the middle. It is all in French being the original, and I think that's fairly cool. A little piece of history here. Here are the main instructions. There's only one page of this, and it's this small section, and of course your schemes at the bottom. From looking at the instructions, the kit seems fairly simple. There aren't too many steps, nor too many pieces. The engine's here, and we have your main fuselage section and the cockpit. You will need to do some scratch boarding as the canopy and the cockpit is not very accurate. The canopy, of course, is still there. They did make glass parts back then. And of course, we have the arrestor hook down at the bottom and some more wing sections. It's a decent kit for its age, and I think it should build fairly well. The instructions do come with a rear side, of course, it is now in different languages, we've got French, we've got Spanish, I think there's German on there. Um, it's pretty neat, shows you the specifications, and is once again the original piece, so it is showing its age. But it folds neatly away and fits in the box, so that's the instructions. The decals of course are the originals, and therefore they have yellowed quite significantly from 1979, or whenever they were actually produced. They are of course extremely yellowed, um, it will have an effect on the kit if I put them on as they are. I could paint them on on the kit, I might not, um, but it will require some better cutting out of them to remove the yellow parts. They look fairly good though to be fair, they look crisp, no over flash, no bleeding, so that's always nice to see. Very impressed with Heller on the way they've done these decals. You can see the two scheme options there divided by the dotted lines. I'm not sure which scheme I'll do yet, but uh, we'll have to wait and see. The parts do look fairly good. They come in three grey sprue sections and they are fairly decently well done. You can see the detail here. It is crisp, there is no extra flash. But it is important to remember that it is an older kit and the details are mostly raised. You can see here that most of it is just complete flat. There are no details on it. It's quite interesting to see around here. There are some inner details of the gear bays, but overall nothing spectacular. So that's the first tree done, let's look at the second. So the second tree then has some more parts on, obviously. Uh, they're mostly wing sections. You can see here that there are actually some proper panel lines, I would expect, in nowadays kits, but of course most of it is raised. There isn't really an issue, but I preferred it if it was one or the other, because uh, then it just looks a bit odd. You can see the uh, engine section here. Not very much detail on it, uh, but it does leave room for scratch building, which I will be doing on this kit, because really it does need it to get up to the nowadays standards, and it also provides a bit of fun. The last tree then provides the main sections of the aircraft. Looking fairly neat, but once again, it does have raised panel lines. I do want to remark though that there is absolutely no flash on the majority of the parts, which is nice to see. There is worth pointing out that there is absolutely no inner cockpit detail apart from the seat and the joystick, so it would be worth scratch rolling if you want it to a higher specification. The kit also comes with two plastic parts to form the canopy. We have the front section and the rear section, or the main section, depending on what you want to call it. You can see that they're fairly well moulded for their age of 1979 and look pretty decent. Overall, there's not an overall amount of detail, but still certainly sufficient. Considering I picked this kit up at a museum, I was very surprised to see all the parts in here and very glad the canopy was in there as that's the most important part. 
We can unfortunately see a small scratch to where I'm pointing at here on the front bit of the canopy. Overall though, it's fairly small and shouldn't detract from the final look of the aircraft. Placing the two pieces together, it does look like they're the same size and width, meaning they should fit ultimately together. So let's have a quick summary then. I bought this kit for £10. I've looked around and the average cost has been £12 and £15, so I think I got a decent deal for this kit. I'm also very impressed with the moulding of this kit as there's little to no flash, very surprising for its age. It is worth mentioning that most of the details are raised but there are some panel lines. Detail is of course lacklustre, especially around the cockpit area, but that's expected for its age. Overall, I think it was an interesting purchase of mine. I'm looking forward to build it and hopefully we can get a build video out soon.